What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flux Harmonic. I'm David Wilson, and today we're back with another one of our uh, bi-weekly streams where we try to build something creative, something fun, uh, using Scheme and C live on stream here. Um, so we'll wait for a few people to file in here. I know there were some people waiting, so we'll just see when they show up. I don't know what the deal is with uh, the viewer count sometimes. Like, it just goes from waiting to zero. Hey, Mr. Bill, you were very... Uh, right on point very early and ready to go whenever i scheduled the stream a couple hours ago so thank you for that i appreciate it hey appenzel busy day to day trying to get finished with the uh system crafters video that i just posted it was quite well it was more effort than i thought it was going to be just because i had i had decided to do demos for everything and i had some trouble with a couple things so i eventually managed to get everything working well enough to to show it so i'm, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out hi olivier ha, olivier says difficult decision watch a live coding stream or study for computer science exams well um studying for exams is always good but i always found myself procrastinating till the very last minute when i was studying for my own exams in college so i can't really fault you for wanting to procrastinate on that studying is not so fun Hey, Gon. Nice to see you. All right. So, um, to, let's see. Hold on. Appenzel says, still need to get around to switching to Geeks. At least it runs on an old machine of mine. Yeah, Geeks, you know, it requires a little bit more effort uh, at the outset, but I am hoping to do some things. Uh, <laughs> hey, GK Sudo. Um, hoping to do some things this year to help with that whole process. Maybe actually having a true graphical installer of some sort or basically like a live CD that you could use to install Geeks. Um, from a more comfortable environment because uh, it's not very easy to install Geeks as it is right now. So we'll see what we can do about that a little bit later. But um, yeah, so today in the stream, uh, the goal is to create a basic image and render it to a PNG file. So last time we managed to get to a point where we could transmit uh, information about what needs to be drawn to the preview window from scheme to see by uh, creating a C API that Scheme can call into very easily to then allocate the objects necessary and add them to the scene. Uh, it turned out to be the most effective way to accomplish that, and I'm pretty happy with, with the approach because what it means is I don't have to depend on how Scheme is going to allocate objects and worry about when to free those or whether it's going to do weird things to them or like where in, in memory it's going to allocate them. Uh, I can actually call into the C layer and have full control over allocations, which means that um, I could do things like object pools or uh, memory arenas or a lot of things that make it easier for me to manage memory the way I want to for the greatest efficiency. So um, uh, today we're going to build on that and we're going to try to actually finish getting a an image drawn to the preview window and then rendered to a PNG file. Now, we're not going to do anything very extravagant. It's going to be very simple, whatever we end up rendering. Uh, but that is basically the pretext to the next step, which is to try to add image rendering into the program and um, uh, text rendering so that I can start getting close to the point where I can use it for generating thumbnails for uh, both my YouTube channels. So uh, I have a very practical uh, desire here in that I'm trying to use it for my own content creation. And I think we're getting close to a point where I could do some very basic work with that. Um, but yeah, I, my, my thumbnails are pretty simple in the sense that I don't have like a lot of components to them. It's usually just like a background, maybe with like a layer to help tone the colors and maybe a little bit of a gradient and then text and then some kind of primary image. So all that stuff is pretty achievable, I think, with um, the code that we're getting to so far. Uh, Lewis says, uh, hey, David, enjoy the Geeks vid today. Still planning on creating an, an updated EFS series this year? Yeah, probably sooner rather than later, in fact, because um, I have a few different ideas that all sort of go together that I want to work on this year for System Crafters. And I think that um, we're going to end up doing some of the, the groundwork for the, like, you could call it Emacs from Scratch 2.0, but it'll be called something else um, pretty soon, I think. All right, so um, next thing on the, on the on the agenda here, I guess you could say, is uh, updates. So after last stream, uh, Ashraz sent a really nice PR to uh, get us. Actually, I think he sent two PRs. I can't remember what the first one was. We might have to look it up. But uh, the, the second one was actually really helpful in that um, 
it made it possible for me to use LSP mode or Eglot now for editing the C code on the native layer of the program. Uh, previously, I was able to edit the C code just fine, but I wasn't getting any kind of uh, code completions for uh, the SDL APIs or any other C APIs really. It's just whatever was in my file I was getting com completions for or any kind of signature help or you know navigation to other parts of the code, that kind of thing. Uh, but now, what Ashras did is convert the project build over to CMake, which enables us to generate this compile commands.json file that the language server for C called CCLS uses to resolve the dependencies and then give me all of that information in the editor. So I basically have a full uh, C IDE now, which is great. Uh, big improvement. And thank you, uh, Ashras, again for, for doing that. Um, so it actually is pretty nice because, uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, it's the CMake lists file that generates the actual GNU make make files is pretty simple. It basically just describes both of the projects we have in here. And, uh, you know, kind of very simply describes the um, dependencies for them as well. And then once you clone the code, you can run this bootstrap.sh script, which will invoke CMake to generate all the make files and this compile commands.json file. And then you can just use make to uh, to build the project at that point. So if you look at the dear local site EL, I actually have the comp compile command already set to uh, run geek shell and then invoke make dash capital C build. So we're still using GNU make and GCC, uh, but we just have CMake generating those make files. So I don't have to manage those anymore. Um, uh, Gavin says Eglot is great. Switched to it not too long ago. I'm actually going to try to use that today. Um, and I'll maybe explain a little bit more about why in a moment. Gon says all macro magic. Yeah, I guess, um, but let's actually take a look really quick at what the actual make files look like in the build folder. I think we have make file, uh, a lot of targets, disable VCS based implicit rules, um, sets a lot of variables. Let's see what else, anything interesting some clean uh, targets. So the main build target. Yeah, so it's building object file. So yeah, it just generates everything basically. Um, it doesn't seem too complicated. I was expecting a lot more weird stuff in here, but it, it is, you know, it's, it's definitely more complicated than the, than the make files I had last time that I had written by hand. But um, honestly, I'm fine with this because I don't really want to be in the business of hand editing make files anyway. So having CMake to do that job for me is uh, is pretty nice. I think all I really have to do from this point forward is just add all the necessary source files to the um, add, ex add executable and add library lines in CMake uh, list.txt. So should be pretty easy. Gan says it looks like M4 in the CMake.txt. It might be. I don't really know much about that though. Uh, let's see, what else did I want to mention? Uh, I hate how uh, tab bar mode, the, the key binding I have set up doesn't work correctly in Dear Ed. Um, yeah, I think that's everything about that. There wasn't anything else that happened in the meantime since the last stream. I haven't had a whole lot of time to look into stuff since then because I was preparing the, the video for the other channel. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about what I'm sort of looking ahead to do relatively soon. So I really want to abandon SDL2 as soon as I can. And the reason for that is because I would prefer to, um, well, actually, let me just move this point up. I would prefer to write my own rendering layer and not depend on the APIs that SDL2 provides because I really don't need a lot of what it provides. I mean, the, the rendering code is kind of useful, but I would prefer to write my own for a lot of the stuff. I kind of want to take a shader driven ap approach for doing a lot of the more elaborate aspects of rendering shapes or even doing more mm, like generated art or kind of texture generation, all kinds of stuff like that. I think shaders make a lot more sense. So, you know, I can get to shaders through SDL too, but I feel like there's a lot of um, sort of a layer in between me and just calling directly into OpenGL. So let me, uh, dump this uh, user here and eh, whatever um, spam. So um, my goal is to use GLFW, which is a smaller library, which uh, does a really good job of setting up an OpenGL context, uh, creating an event loop, which is something we're using from SDL right now, and also handling input. That way, uh oh, 
That way, um, we actually have the ability to create a window to render to, and we can deal with keyboard input, mouse input, etc., cetera, uh, pretty easily, but we don't have all this other stuff like the audio subsystem and you know a lot of image loading capabilities. I guess there's some of this stuff comes from libraries, but still, I feel like uh, I could get away with not having a lot of that because I'm gonna write it myself. Um, so what I wanna do is to get some of the things working in SDL2 to validate the model. So that's basically what we've been doing up until now is using SDL2 to quickly prototype the environment to get the sort of basic kinks worked out. And then once we have it working, then we can try to rip out the SDL parts and then uh, go with a slightly different approach and then make sure that we can generate basically the same type of result. Um, I'm hoping that this will give me a lot more control over how the whole project comes together. Maybe I'll just go back to SDL2, I don't know, but I, I have this urge to drop as many dependencies that I would like to do myself um, and just sort of go more clean, I guess you could say. But that's just sort of my uh, my desire. I don't know. We'll see how practical it is in the long term. I think that, you know, starting this now and not like, you know, two months from now is going to be better because at least I'll not uh, use SDL2 as a crutch too much. Um, let's see. All right, so that's it for sort of what I've been thinking about as far as you know what to do next on the project. So back to what we want to accomplish today. So like I said, we want to try to get an image rendering out to a file so that we can get to a point where we could generate images for use for whatever purpose, but primarily thumbnails for now. Um, so we need to go back to figuring out why the uh, scene flipping approach I was trying to implement last time didn't work. Um, if you weren't here, basically what happened is that when we render things in the native layer, uh, it has a render loop that's constantly rendering the current scene that's stored in memory. But if you want to, on the scheme side, to update the data about what's being rendered, you need a way to, to swap out the current scene with, for the new scene um, without having threading issues. So the, the way to do that is use SDL's event loop to um, send a notification to the event loop to say, hey, swap the, the scene. So it can happen at a very specific time uh, while rendering and uh, input updates and stuff like that aren't actually happening. So we'll look into that a little bit and see if we can discover the issue. Probably now that I'm not like, you know, at the end of a three hour stream, I'll probably figure it out pretty fast. We'll see. Uh, then I want to uh, flesh out the approach for calling C functions to communicate scene data. Basically, we just need to make sure that uh, we have a good structure for adding new functions and um, you know cleaning up what we've got so far. It's probably good enough, but we'll, we'll see if there's anything we can improve there. And then uh, make sure that we can reevaluate the scheme code to update the live previews. This sort of follows from the first task here where uh, we need to be able to send that event to update the scene. And then after that, we'll experiment a little bit to see if we can just keep changing the scene while everything is running. We probably also need to make sure that we're cleaning up memory effectively. So um, let's see. Let me actually get out of this presentation mode here. Um, try to clean up the old scene memory when it's not when it's no longer needed. I mean, this isn't super critical right now. This may be a longer term task just because I would rather make progress on visible things at the moment. I mean, we may not run into some huge, you know, memory uh, overload because everything's pretty small at the moment but we'll see you know whether we need to do it sooner or, or later uh, i also want to write a function that can convert uh, html style hex colors to rgba um, the reason why is because emacs has a very nice uh rainbow what is it rainbow mode let me pull that up rainbow mode yeah so basically what that does is that in a buffer if you were to write something like uh, hash F F O O F F, it actually shows you the color uh, on the text. So in the C code, I could actually type out hex codes or in, in the scheme code, even type out the hex codes and see the actual color in the buffer. So it'd be helpful for me to sort of know what my color palette is for certain things. Um, so I think that it'd be nice if I could pass in a string like this to the APIs and have it convert that into the uh, four uint8 values that we need to use for representing colors in the C layer. Um, also, uh, we need to write the function to render an image to P PNG file, but I actually think that's pretty easy uh, compared to everything else. 
And then um, if we get to this point, I want to try to load and render an image file. So like load basically a, a full image that would be displayed inside of the thing that we're going to render out. So, you know, in many of my thumbnails, I have a background that needs to go in. So I just pick up a, a, a PNG or a JPEG from somewhere and then uh, put it as the sort of background of the image. So I need to be able to load an image and render it into the preview pane to then eventually get that into a file. I uh, also want to re render text to the image. SDL has routines for this, and this is going to be one of the things that um, might be harder to replicate whenever it comes time to get rid of SDL2, but we'll figure that out. Uh, loading and rendering image files is not so bad because you can just pick up one of the existing uh, libraries for decoding images of various formats like PNG or JPG or GIF or anything like that. So I'm not as worried about that part, but rendering text is harder. I mean, I may have to, to resort to using a library like uh, Pango or Harfbuzz, very likely. I mean, if I want to load up fonts and then TTF fonts or OTF fonts and render text with those, which I do, um, I'm going to have to resort to using some library, but I don't want to use SDL2 long term for that. All right. So that's what we're going to try to do. So now let's just uh, jump right into the first thing, which is try to figure out why these scene flipping approach did not work the last time. So we're going to pull up our uh, lib.c file. Another thing we're going to have to do soon is to start splitting the C sources into separate files, which also means that we're going to have to start dealing with header files. Um, so that's when C starts to get a little bit more fun, but we won't deal with that today, I think. OK, so uh, register custom event for scene flipping. So what we had to do last time was register an event so that we can get um, the ID for the event and um, send that through the event loop. And I think that we were actually, it was actually happening, but uh, either the program would crash whenever I did that or it just didn't do anything. So yeah, Mr. Bill says header fun. Yeah, it's, you know, we gotta start dealing with all the if defs and whatnot to uh, make sure we don't include the same header twice and then, you know, decide where we're gonna put our function signatures and all that good stuff. So, um, Let's see, you know, I might do, wait, hold on. Ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. So let's just try out what we have so far and uh, see what we can come up with. I'm gonna go set the current project to back to the example slash basic graphics.scm file. And if you don't remember that one, um, it basically it's just a very simple scheme file that um, configures the, the scene that we're trying to render here with just a single circle for now. So um, let's run it, control C, R. All right, so we actually do run it successfully. I don't remember what else we had set up here. Unspecified, I wonder what I'm printing out. Let's see, display. I should probably put a uh, paren in front of that. Hmm, interesting. Snippet should take care about inclusion guards. Ah, yeah, if, if I have snippets set up correctly, it that would probably help. That's true. Um, let's go look at libc again. So we are rendering. Let's double check what we were doing. So back in init graphics, we call init scene to uh, initialize the first scene data structure. We allocate the memory for that. Um, did eglot work here? Let's see. Uh, eglot mode? No. Eglot eglot ensure okay so eglot is working which is good okay good this is what i was hoping i could put my cursor on top of something and it's going to give me uh the signature in the echo area so let me um what is it xref definition i need to figure out what the oh gd great all right cool so and it's seen uh we are allocating the first scene we put it into the staging scene so uh, the first thing we do is put it in staging, which is interesting because how are we currently rendering? Ah, okay, so promote staging scene. Do we ever call that? All right, I have to remember what we were doing last time. So current scene equals. So that is the, the place where we're swapping it. Current scene equals staging scene, init scene. Um, current, hold on now. 
Yeah, okay, I need to take this out. Currently, um, in the basic graphics, if I were to reavow this document, oh, part of the problem we also had is a show preview window um, might actually not respect doing it more than once. Let me check that really quickly. I think I didn't, let's see, what was it called? Show preview, that's in graphics.scm. Init graphics, okay, so we call init graphics. Inside of lib.c, I do check that now. So I should be able to um, re this code without it causing problems. So control C, B, I think. All right, cool. So it, it cleared out the screen, which is not what we expected to do. We expected to actually uh, update the display. We didn't change anything in the scheme file. So in theory, it should re render the same thing again. So the, evalu the expression evalu evaluated was uh, basically the whole file. And the result is um, unspecified, which is probably fine. But it doesn't do what we expect it to do. And I wonder why. So we need some way to signal. I'm starting to wonder if we need a log file of sorts because writing to standard out doesn't actually uh, propagate to the REPL, which makes sense. Um, the only way we could actually do it is if we could log into the Guile layer. So maybe there's actually a function we can use to call Guile's display function. It's a little bit dangerous because we're gonna be crossing threads, but uh, maybe. Maybe it's fine. Let's check info. We're going to go to Guile. What was it called? Uh, why am I keybind? It's not working well. Okay, let's use it this way. Guile reference. There we go. And um, let's see. The API reference may be what I want. Or, wow, what did I just hit? Uh, index. Let's see. Index. Procedure index. Um, SEM C display print. How about if I do this? Uh, SEM display display error display application. Yeah, it's not what I expect to see. SEM print right using ports from C. Okay, so that seems like the right place to go. Right size byte. Whoa. Jeez. Okay, I keep hitting buttons. I don't know if my, my key bindings changed here or something since the last time. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I need to go back. Um, man, that's really annoying. Index. Procedure index. SCM. Right. Okay, so um, note this is a binary output procedure. The function does not update port line and port column. Textual I.O. Let's see if I can write something out. I don't see any C procedures here. If it doesn't have anything, I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'll just use the C layer to write things out to um, a file. Okay, so we can control things like the column and line number, but we can't actually write text, it seems. Okay, so then what I'll do is uh, maybe have a log file that we can consult. And... Um, I'll just write out the same file every time and we can keep a buffer open that reverts on its own and we can just take a look at it whenever it gets updated. So SDL may have its own logging library, but I'm not going to bother with that right now. I may just have a simple log function of some sort. I have to deal with var args though, which might be fun. Eh, you know, we'll just use uh, regular old printf, I think, or fprintf, I guess. So um, I need to remember how to open a file in C. I think it's F open. Let's see, open a file for write in C language. Yeah. Can I skip doing whatever this is? Yep, F open. Uh, Gon says, don't use log4j. Yeah, I'm not gonna make that mistake. Of course, what I'm doing in this code is probably bad enough as far as uh, security is concerned. If you didn't hear about that, log4j basically had an arbitrary code execution issue that was discovered recently and it's been deployed in millions of places for years until now. All right, so f open, 
file open uh, to open in the mode. Okay, so we want to do write, and we do not want to append. If it's, if it exists, contents are overwritten. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> in the um, init graphics, I might want to have a separate library for logging. But for now, we'll just uh, do it this way. So um, void, eh, you know, here, here, let's just uh, be really, really, really cheap and simple at the moment. Uh, it's going to re return a, an integer of some sort. Oh, a file handle. Okay. File uh, log file equals null. Open the log file if it uh, isn't yet. Since we can call init graphics multiple times in the life of the program, we need to, to make sure that we're not going to open it again. So log file uh, equals null. Then um, log file equals uh, f open. And I guess we could say um, log.txt. I don't know. It's pretty lame for now, but we'll just go with that for the moment. Make it configurable at some point. And now that we have that, then we can have a logging function void log um, care star uh, message. And I need to remember, let's see, C variable arguments. I just want to pass these along to, I mean, a macro could work for this too, but I think maybe we'll go with one of these types of functions if we can just pass that stuff along. Let's see, C writing an F print F wrapper. I think that's probably how we want to go with this. I don't care about filtering. Come on, let's just get this out of my face. Okay, so I can't be actually, no, that's C plus plus. I want C dude. That doesn't help me. How about this? Is this still, come on. Everything in the world seems to be C++, so I have to, to dodge all the C++ related answers. Oh, v, v print F. that seems to be the one. I forgot about that one, V print F. All right, so V print F format args. Is that right though? Let's just give it a shot real quick. I'm going to change this to log. I'm not going to worry about priorities right now. I I find it unlikely that dot 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 works, but maybe it's some new thing that I don't know about. And then let's join that on this line. There, uh, this clang format. I would like to actually get that set up because it was doing a good job earlier with the LSP mode. <clears throat> what if you can't open it? If oh yeah, I should probably check. You know that kind of stuff. I probably should actually use a function for that too to make it a little bit more robust. But for right now, I'm not that worried about it. Okay, so VA start, VA end, F print F, V print F. Is there a VF print F? Mm, no. F V print F? Come on now. Uh, V print F, F print F. V F print F. Okay, well, the, if IBM says it's true, then it must be. Um, okay, then I need to have a log file here. And I also need to check if a log file is not null. So we don't write to some garbage. Let's see if this actually works. Okay, that seems right. Okay, so, um... Maybe that works. Let's actually check it out. Uh, I can try to build this really quickly and see if it complains. Okay, it's complaining about something. Oh, let me get this out of the way. Conflicting types for log. Um, did I have that twice? Const care. 214. VA list args, args format. Do I, I'm not returning an integer. Is that what the problem is? Let's see what they have here. 
Ah, let's just make it a void then. I don't know what it's supposed to do. Um, can I get the error list also? Conflicting types are log. I'm still getting errors here, which is good. I don't have to compile it. Previous declaration is at 104. No. Ah, maybe if there's a log function to find. Oh no, it's log the math function. Okay, I see it here now. All right. Pfft. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Flux log, yeah, okay, good idea. Cool, I think that makes it happy now. So uh, we'll go ahead and compile again. Okay, that worked. So now, whenever I get the the call for promote staging scene, I can just use a flux log. Um, uh, maybe I should have. Do they have like a? Print FN. Maybe I don't want that, but yeah, let's just do this for now. It's fine. What don't you like? Implicit declaration of function is invalid. Let me just move this up toward the top. Probably it needs to be in the right order. So I'm, I'm definitely getting to the point where I need to have separate files because this is going to get really messy in just a moment. Okay, so also log file needs to be added up to the top as well. So we'll put that right here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we're, we're going to end up creating another file for sure in just a moment, I think. Because it's already starting to annoy me. Okay, so that seems to be happier now. It's really nice having this in the editor so I don't have to keep just recompiling and hoping it works. I uh, also want to go to the um, SDL event loop and then write something here as well to make sure that uh, received uh, scene event. We want to see that it actually did receive the event and um, see basically what happened. We can also add a, a message here for initializing the scene and it's scene. Okay, good. That actually worked. Um, I forgot I should turn on my keycast so you get to see all the buttons I'm pressing. I can go here and then say scene initialize. Or in fact, maybe new scene initialized. Okay, so we'll compile that and then we'll give it a try. And um, Interestingly, it's not drawing anything this time. Let me go and open up, if it exists, log.txt, cool. Ah, maybe I need to flush every time I write. Let's see. So after this, I want to flush, just plain old flush. Uh, flush log file. I don't remember the actual syntax or the uh, stuff for this function. Flush int implicit declaration of function flush. F flush? Is that poss possibly what it is? F flush? Okay. C flush uh, uh, file handle. Uh, F flush. Okay. It, it, it actually did eventually become happy with that. Okay, so I will kill this then. Uh, yeah, of course, that, that was what it is. So we'll keep this right there. Make sure that um, auto revert mode is on. Cool, it's on now. So if we go compile again, run again. Are you updating? Now I can go to graphics.scm and then um, eval the buffer. So either Emacs is not picking up on the log messages or the log messages are not being written when I expect them to be. Received new scene. So it's interesting that that happened. We initialize a scene, we received a new scene, but we did not actually flip to it. Oh, you know, that's because I, mm hmm So it, now I can see, it looks like the event stuff is not working. 
Um, because the first thing that happens, did I, maybe I did the wrong file. Ah, so magically they just started working. Mm, I'm skeptical. Logs are being written. <coughs> what if, excuse me, what if I do it again? Control C, Control B. Well, it didn't disappear. Probably should put a timestamp in the logs too, so I can tell when it happened. Um, let's see then. Maybe then what the problem is that I never promoted the first scene or I never set up the, um, the backing scene. So how about this? We'll kill that program. Uh, at the first, we create a blank scene. Um, so we create the scene. It's currently there, but we need to flip it first. So maybe I just need to, need to promote the first scene. But I need to know. So maybe the very first time is when I need to do it this way. For the first initialization, uh, promote the blank scene. So um, promote. Can you give me completions on stuff in this file? Uh, maybe control alt I. Okay, there we go. Promote stage and scene. Okay, so eGlot has a little bit different setup than LSP mode, but that's fine because I actually prefer the way that it does things. It's a little bit more Emacs native. All right, so um, for the first time, I'll promote the staging scene. That might actually be enough. Control C R. Okay, so it's blank, um, which is wrong. Yeah. We're supposed to be loading up basic graphics at SCM. So that's not even working, which is very weird. Whoops, what did I just do? Yeah, something strange is happening there. Receive new scene, receive new scene, receive new scene. So where do we call that? And promote staging scene. Um, maybe I need to be logging out. Um, let's see, what were the functions for that? Add scene member. Okay, so we can do that. So added scene member. And in this case, we can write out the uh, ID, which is going to be, if I did the syntax right, no, it's D. Um, D, there we go. For new, oh, I just, just type, right? Okay. That should be good enough. So now I can kill this guy. Um, control C R. Control C R. Added scene member two. So we do see a circle being added in. And if I go back to basic graphics and you do control C, control B, then we see it. It says it twice, which doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> Trying to figure out why, unless. Maybe my logic is actually wrong at the bottom of this file. So if graphics initialize is zero. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm doing the wrong thing here. And then uh, create another blank scene as the backing buffer, I guess you could say. Yeah, we'll see. This is kind of dirty, but I think it's going to work after I finish this. So let's get rid of that. I need a way to kill that quickly too. All right, control C, control R. Uh, not working. So receive, let's see, new scene initialized, uh, received new scene. That's probably the promote we do here. I'm missing some things though, because I feel like we should see more than one. So let's think. Knit graphics gets called by um, render graphic, I think. No, no, show preview window. So when show preview window gets called, we're doing the initial um, creation of the scene.
if graphics initialize equals zero, which is going to be the case at the very beginning, then we are going to run this code, which initializes the first scene, which would have called new scene initialized. Okay. And that sets the staging scene. So it's not the main scene, it's just a staging scene. So promote staging scene. Ah, maybe, maybe I actually don't need to do part of what I was doing here, but it still doesn't really explain what happened. So um, actually let's use this flux log. We want to go to receive scene event. So it seems we're still not receiving that event. So that must be the answer here. We should though look at what events are coming through. So let's see if we can get a log on um, SDL event codes. And we're gonna write out the event dot type. And also we can just write out the event ID that we're looking for just to make sure that we have a, a legitimate number. Scene event ID. All right, so now we can get rid of this window again and then control C, whoops, control C, control R, control C, control little R. Okay, so getting some events. Um, the one we're looking for is 32768. Probably gonna get a lot of log messages here. I don't know what all this is, but none of it is what we're looking for. So. Let's go down to the bottom. We're going to go back to basic graphics and then control C, control B. Oh, now it worked. Maybe I, uh, huh, that's kind of weird. We should go back to the log file. Yeah, it doesn't write anything out that made it look like something happened. So we'll do this again. Control C, Control B. Huh. Okay, so here we go. Let's uh, write out another log message. I know this is starting to get a little bit ridiculous with all the logging, but sometimes it's necessary without actually resorting to a debugger, which I don't really want to do at the moment. All right, so I will add a log here, flux uh, log, uh, initializing graphics thread. And then we can also add one here for graphics thread already initialized. Okay, now control C, control R, control C, R. So initializing graphics thread, we start seeing a bunch of events from SDL, even more this time, probably because I'm moving the mouse. That, look, that makes sense. And uh, now we'll go back to basic graphics, control C, control B. It did something there. Received new scene event. Okay, so it actually received the event that time. I don't know why. It seems very unreliable, whatever's happening here. Okay, so that's line 213. If I run it again, Okay, seems to be doing it. So what if I make a change then? If I make a change for this to 500, the Y position, Control C, Control B, it moves. Okay, cool. I make a change for this to uh, position 200, Control C, Control B. Okay, it's working now. Maybe I just happened to run across the right set of things to change. Hey, Bill. Um, we're going to leave these log messages for now just for uh, future um, diagnostic purposes. I will take out that SDL event one, though, because I don't want to be seeing that all the time now that we kind of know what's going on. Uh, flux log. So let's go back to um, that one. Okay, let's get rid of that one. So um, consult line, if you haven't used the consult package before, is pretty nice for jumping through a particular file. I have that bound to control S. And if I type flux space log, I just get to all the log messages in this file. So it makes it a lot easier than using uh, the slash character in evil mode to search and move around that way. So I, I have to remind myself to do that every now and then. 
Okay, so now what we're gonna do is go mark this one off. I think we're done with this one for now, as long as it doesn't pop back up again. So hopefully that doesn't happen. So now I'm saying I wanted to flesh out the approach for calling C functions to communicate scene data. Um, let me just go and double check what I had done here for scene initialization. I just wanna make sure I didn't do anything stupid. Knit scene, promote staging scene. Okay, so we, we set up the staging scene. Let's say, let's make it clear here, staging scene. Um, in fact, to make it even more clear, let's call this, uh, what's it, eglot rename. We're gonna rename this to init staging scene. So it's very clear what we're doing. Init staging scene, promote staging scene. Now the steps there seem to be clear. We know that we're initializing staging and then promoting it immediately so that we have something up. Um, promote staging scene itself does not create the new um, uh, scene, but the event handler does. So the place where we look for uh, scene uh, event ID, we are calling init staging scene here. So maybe I should move this logic to another function so that's more obvious uh, what is actually happening. And also we can do the, the um, the freeing of the old scene data. So let's say flip current scene or if, yeah. And we don't really need any other information because we're just going to grab all that out of the global information. So uh, promote staging scene. I'll go here and then add a function called uh, flip staging scene with no parameters. And then we're going to drop this back a little bit here. So in this case, I'm just going to say uh, flipping the staging scene. And that should be good enough for that. Como estas, Marcos? Nice to see you. All right. So, oh, uh, Felipe says, would colors change too? Yeah, definitely. Let me actually just try that out really quickly. So control C, control R, make sure we didn't break anything. Control C, R. And um, now nothing's rendering. So obviously we did something really nice. Maybe I forgot. Did I do something wrong? Flip state current scene. That's right. Did I not get a compiler error for that? All right. So control C, control R. And uh, control C, R. Still not rendering. That's very suspicious. I don't like the fact that this seems um, inconsistent. Because nothing's actually, oh wait, here we are. Received new scene, added scene member. Okay, so received new scene, who gets that? Yeah, okay, so um, promoting scene, let's just call it that. Okay, then uh, we can get a better read on what's happening here. New scene initialized, promote staging scene, uh, add scene member two, promote staging scene. But the event, once again, is not coming through. Something, something wrong is happening. Wait, hold on a second. Flip current. I don't break here. But I don't actually know. Wait, I need to continue? No. Anything else happening here? No, I don't want to continue because I actually want it to go into effect immediately. Uh, received a scene event. Let's just write that out explicitly and see if uh, it ever shows up because I kind of doubt it at this point. Oh, hold on. Exited abnormally. Did I really write console.log? Obviously, I've been writing too much JavaScript. Flux log. Um, all right. So now control C, control R. Okay. Let me just revert this in case because I don't, I didn't catch it update. So it's not receiving the event. I got to go back and write this again. Flux log, um, SDL event D event type, and then scene event 
I may just have to leave this in because there's something really weird going on here. Let's get rid of that. Oops, I forgot the new line. Hmm. I wonder if it doesn't get the first event. Yeah. Felipe has it. Um, that must be what it is. So where am I actually setting up that scene uh, event ID? Init SDL. That's got to be what it is. So, man. So I need to just reverse the order of some things, maybe? That's got to be it. So a knit graphics thread, maybe then I need to have that be done first before I do anything else. All right, so that seems right. <clears throat> so we init the graphics thread, which then init's SDL and creates that event. Um, yep, and now we can use Control C, Control R. Um, still not triggering like the way I think it should, but maybe if we do this, Control C, Control B, it will trigger it. So. We're gonna change this to 255, save it, uh, Control C, Control B. Okay, so it does, does change color, changes position. It's just that very first um, invocation isn't working correctly. So I'm not that worried about that at the moment. I think we can probably move on to the next thing. I'm glad I did look into that because it, it was very inconsistent behavior. All right, now I'm, now I'm thinking too much about it. Let's see. So if we init the graphics thread, we init the staging scene, then we promote the staging scene. At this point, we should already have the event ID. In fact, I can check it here. So flux log um, scene event ID, scene event ID. I mean, more than likely it's gonna be the same one that we saw last time because we're not really registering any other new events. And um, I wanna go fix the flux log event um, right here. To, so that it has uh, new lines appropriately. Control C, Control R, Control C, R. Uh, scene event ID is negative one, so it's not even set up then. That is very strange. Let me double check what I'm doing. Scene event ID. That happens in init, init SDL. I'm wondering you know what? I think that uh, I think I know what's happening. I think it's happening on a separate thread. Yeah, we're kicking off the rendering thread and it's not hap it's happening at the same time. So it's actually uh, concurrent when these these two pieces of code are running and that explains why we have that uh, timing issue. So <clears throat> excuse me. I wonder if I should actually do some of that initialization in the init SDL function. So this stuff that I'm doing right here, I should be doing it on the uh, graphics thread. And even then, I don't even need to deal with the, the event issue because I can just initialize it before I do anything else. So let's go right up here. Init staging scene, promote staging scene. Um, if I init the staging scene and promote it, then as soon as the event loop starts, I think it should be doing the right thing. Okay, I think this is gonna be right. Or not. Segmentation fault, okay. Something is in the wrong order. This is the lovely part of dealing with uh, native code for sure. So is this still running or is it dead? Okay, it's dead. That's fine. Init staging scene. Okay, that doesn't require anything. Promote staging scene. Uh, oh, SDL push event. So is everything initialized by that point? 
SEL init has happened. Okay, so maybe I should just not depend on this promote function. Yeah, this is not ideal, but I think this is because we're not really dealing with the best organized code at the moment. Current scene equals staging scene, and then we're just gonna init another one. Let's make sure that this function doesn't do anything it shouldn't be doing. Yeah, it's just allocating things, which is good. Okay. I think that's what we want. Yeah, okay, so let's go with that. We're gonna compile it, run it. Wow, it's still locked up. So something must have changed then. Let's kill that guy, REPL, init graphics thread. Yeah, we create our thread. Interesting, very, very interesting. I mean, we don't even get to the point where, um, that's very strange. It doesn't even get to the point where it writes out the message. Because we're not writing anything out from the other thread at that point. Knit graphics thread. You can move SDL init and SDL register events to init graphics thread outside init.sdl. That'll make it run in the context of the main app thread instead. Um, maybe it doesn't matter if I do that. Because all it matters is that the render loop is on a different thread. So it is possible. But I'm just kind of confused as to why all of a sudden this made a made a problem. So what if I just take this out? Init SDL is being called. Register events. I wonder if somehow that being called at that specific moment is causing the problem. I just can't see why though. Let's take it out. Okay, still not doing anything. I find that very strange. Still segmentation fault. Huh. What did I change? Let me just look at the actual code diff because something is wrong here. Did I delete graphics initialize? No, it's there. Okay, so init scene. Knit graphics thread. Flip current scene. But we haven't gotten to that point of the code. Flux log. <clears throat> well, maybe I should not be logging at that specific moment then. Can't really be it though, can it? Nope. Go ahead and crash. That is so weird. Hmm. Let's try this then. I don't know. LSP it. What? Okay. We'll just put it here and see what happens. Kind of feel like it's going to be a problem though, because we start that up. Let's see what it does. Okay, I'm I'm getting very very suspicious about this. Let me just back everything up to where it was before, because this just doesn't make any sense. So let's fix that go back to this. So we have the init graphics thread. We start doing the, <clears throat> the scene initialization. Okay, so now we're back to having a window up, which is interesting. I don't know why. Let's actually uh, comment these two out and see. If
Haha. <laughs> I'm still here, actually. Very weird. Sorry about that, people. <laughs> Can you see me? Okay. I think I hit one of my key bindings that actually changed the uh, scene. That, so you thought, yeah. GK Studio has it right. I uh, hit a scene switch key binding, which means I probably should make that not so easy to hit. I don't know what I did. Sorry about that. Yeah, I commented out the stream feed. If I had written my own software, I might run into that problem every now and then. Okay. Let me just uh, take a moment and gather myself here because we're getting into the weeds. So Felipe had a suggestion. Whether uh, init scene was a problem, it means scene is a null pointer. So let's check uh, the usages of current scene. So current scene is not null, render scene, current scene. So we don't try to render a scene unless there's one there. And I believe by default current scene should be set to initialize to null. Yeah, both of them are initial, initialized to null. Uh, staging scene. Do I call that anywhere? That could be the place where it happens, I guess. If I call add scene member and there's no staging scene, yeah, that, that's probably the place where it's crashing then. So um, I think what we need to see here then is if a staging scene is not equal to null, then we should um, do the work Otherwise, we need to log that something bad is happening here. And it could just be like a panic or something if I were to add a panic function to just bail out immediately. So uh, flux, flix, flux, log, um, attempting to add member to uh, uninitialized scene. So maybe, well to do panic. All right. So now we're going to uh, recompile and then we'll get back to uh, things being sensible again. Okay, so that launches. Now the question is, uh, where were we before with moving everything around? Okay, so now, now it launches. So that definitely was it. Thank you, uh, Felipe, for pointing out my stupidity. I'm going to go back. Do I need to do that? Yeah, I need, I need to make sure that I have the event ID registered before I start monkeying around with these uh, scenes or promoting, I guess, the scene is, is the most important thing. I guess the inter interesting thing is why did it even get to that point? Scheme is, is calling directly in. Ah, okay, so that's why. The scheme thread gets unblocked and continues calling the functions to add members to the scene while S the SDL thread is still initializing. So that makes total sense. Do I need to have a way to block the scheme thread from executing further until the uh, UI thread is up? I wonder if that would cause me even further problems. But anyway, I think we understand now what the problem is there. And if I were to compile the code one more time and then run it, I think we're going to be back in business. Um, OK, so we did get the scene event ID, which is good. And if I go into the basic graphics and you're running Control C, Control B, then it should put something on the screen and then I can move it around a little bit. Control C, Control B. OK. Uh, so now we're back to the original problem that I was poking at momentarily, which is that the initial graphic scene does not actually show up. And it's very interesting when you think about it because it's trying to initialize a scene immediately. Okay. Hmm. So it is almost like I need to uh, run SDL init. I think that would actually help. So how about we do this? I'm going to run SDL init in the main thread, like Felipe had suggested, because uh, that seems to be the right thing to do. We only want to run the render loop as part of this uh, separate thread. Um, so I can take all of this 
and put it into, well, honestly, I could just put it all here. No problem with uh, putting SDL in it there, sort of. I mean, I know I called the other function SDL in it, but actually what this really turns out to be is the, ah, uh, well, I guess we are sort of initializing SDL a little bit. So how about this? We need a uh, function for the, <clears throat> render loop, render loop. And then we're gonna take the while here. I think both of these things we're gonna take. And I think the, the, the nice thing I had before here was all these were like local variables in this function, but now I'm gonna have to start passing things around potentially, which I'm not fully pleased about. And I kinda don't wanna make those globals. Okay. We'll just do this anyway. We'll do this for now and then later we'll change it. So what I'm going to do is take all this stuff out, put it right here, uh, drop the level of indentation back down for some reason. And then um, for the init case, I think... Uh, some of this stuff can just move into that init graphics thread function. Right? I mean, if all that does is just start the render loop, it's sort of pointless what I just did, I guess. Maybe just renaming the function was good enough for that. So we're just going to have here a render loop. And do I have any um, variables that are no longer accessible here? No, I think everything's fine. Okay, so now let's go back and look at what we're doing. So in the initialized graphics, we set up SDL, we register the event, we set up the initial scene, then we initialize the graphics thread, and that's going to start up a thread, basically. I mean, we don't even need a function for that. I mean, we could just sort of do that here, I guess. I know it's... We're getting rid of semantics, but I think that they're not really helpful. So maybe we'll just do this. And now whenever the th render thread starts up, it's going to create the window and then start doing stuff. So in theory, at this point, we should have everything we need to receive messages. And I don't think I want to call this actually. Let's try that. Control uh, C, Control R. Control C R. Boom. Okay, so I think that's the right way to approach it. So if I go to basic graphics and then I change this to 200 and Control C Control B, it works. And if I change this to zero, it works. Okay. So let's do it one more time. Control C R. Yeah, I think we're good. I think that is the the right thing. So now we actually finally have um, accomplished the task that I marked as done. How long ago? When was that? Um, about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so yeah, at least we got the sequencing of everything right, which is good. Make sure I don't have anything left to clean up there. Okay, so render loop, render scene. Cool, I'm, I'm okay with that for now. So the next thing was uh, flesh out the approach for calling C functions to communicate scene data. Let me just go take a look at those functions again. I think I'm happy with how they look. Let's see, make, yeah, they're the make functions. Uh, make color struct, make circle struct, and then add scene member. Those all seem good to me. Um, initializing the staging scene, uh, synchronize this. I don't think I need to do that anymore. So I can just basically say that, um, well, do I need to do that? At the time that we call this function, the assumption is that we need a new staging scene. So I don't think we need to, to, to um, synchronize that. So I'm just gonna leave that the way it is currently. Promote uh, sends the event, which is fine. Um, flip does that. It uh, assigns the current scene and then uh, initializes the staging scene again. So is there anything, so I guess here's a problem. If uh, for whatever reason the scheme layer is repeatedly uh, spamming um, with new graphics, it, we could get into a uh, synchronization issue for sure. 
So we may have to deal with that later, but right now we'll just uh, move on to the next thing. So I think we're okay for those functions. What we might want to do though, is actually try to break something out into uh, separate files. So how about this uh, log.c? Um, maybe uh, scene.c. Go back to lib. I mean, I might regret this if it turns out that um, some of these things need to be or if we have to jump around files too much because obviously it's going to be an issue once we have to navigate it around a lot but maybe some of these things like logging functions we're not going to have to look at very often so so flux log we want to take that function and drop it over there so we'll put that in log.c uh, probably need to pull in standard io uh, and standard arg in this file i don't know if we need standard lib probably not yeah, I think we're good. We're not, we don't have any markers here. Um, and for the signature, I think we probably need to have a flux.h or something. We can drop that signature in here. Uh, is that like a, I don't know if I need to do like an X turn or something. I don't remember. So snippets. Yeah, I don't know if I have any of this. Uh, let's just do the, the hand, by hand way. Uh, if undefined um, flux h, define flux h, and then end if. Unterminated conditional uh, directive. I don't know what that means in this context. Oh, I need to pay, put end if. So um, we have that function. And I will put that into lib.c, include uh, flux.h. So some advice I had seen on that video that I mentioned last week is basically to have all of your, well, I guess the log function is not really a, an API function, so maybe it doesn't belong there, but we're just gonna put everything in one header file for right now just to make it a little bit easier. Um, if anybody knows that's a terrible thing to do, just let me know and I'll change it but uh, for now I think it's decent to do that so for scene.c I think we can drop this in here um, our different types maybe we need a different file for that at some point but we'll skip that for now so um, member types constants I don't know. That's kind of a lame way to call it. What else? We need to have uh, the scene flipping functions in there. Uh, render scene also technically speaking could go in that file, I think. Uh, render filled circle. Yeah, we're sort of getting into like maybe we need rendering uh, a file of rendering functions, but let's not deal with that right now. Just a little bit of code cleanup. And this may be things that I need to do off stream. I don't know if it's uh, too boring watching me do code cleanup, but we're just gonna get this done really quickly to make me not feel like this is going too far off the deep end. Okay, so we'll leave. Hmm. Now that's interesting. The, these global variables for the current scene, the question is, do we need to have some way to pass that into the API or is it still, I guess I could just have like a get current scene function, but that still seems not appropriate. There may be another way to do it. I'll think about that in a moment. So how about we just go ahead and take these pieces, drop that into scene.c. The rendering function should probably come toward the end, I think, because it honestly doesn't really feel like it belongs. Watch me regret this really, really fast. I'll take, uh, well, SDL we need here. I'll just, I'll yank this for now. I also need to have uh, standard IO, I think. I wonder which library those uh, uint types are in. I think that must've been at standard IO. Flux log, so I need to include flux.h here. 
X turn void. Okay. So I might need to do X turns on that. I guess what happens whenever... Well, I know. I guess you don't need that, do you? Okay. Let's... Uh... So we're good from that standpoint. Uh, scene member, we need to have the... Oh, the actual structs need to be in the header file. I forgot about that whole aspect. So in scene.c, I've got these types here. Um, type circle needs to be in the header file. The struct for the scene type, member type, etc., need to be there. I guess it, technically I could put this stuff in uh, logging functions. Put some sections here, I guess. Scene. Okay. So I need to put uh, some includes in here. Libc. Does that not make that happy? Unknown type name. Or is that an SDL.h? Actually, could be. Oops. Is it right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's SDL.h. Okay, so um, that's some of our types and the logging function extern. Uh, what other functions am I going to be calling in lib.c? You don't get picked up? No. That seems weird. I wonder why it doesn't pick that up. Unknown type name. Do I need to extern those also? Okay. Render loop um, is going to be calling flip current scene. So we need to have that one there. So I'm going to go into scene to flip current scene. Uh, we also need, well, we also need render scene as well. We need render scene, flip current scene, uh, promote staging scene, init staging scene. And um, add scene member. We can leave that for now. Let's just do this. So flux.h. I'm gonna drop in some functions here, X turn that. We're gonna rip out some of this gunk. Another thing I had been seeing is uh, there's a lot of libraries where you have um, header only libraries where the whole code for the library is actually part of a header file. Uh, I don't know how good of an idea that is, but it is something that one could do if you wanted to avoid having to deal with headers or uh, headers and C files, I guess. And then back in lib.c now, these should be picking up from the header if, okay, yeah, good. The language server can figure, figure that out at least, that's good. What else, current scene, yeah, we haven't fi figured out a solution for that one yet. Uh, log file, so um, yeah, we need an open log file function now. So open log um, and then log.text. I can do this. So in log.c, we need an uh, void open log function. I probably need some kind of integer return for that. Const care uh, file. I'm gonna drop this code in. Uh, file path, let's call that maybe path. Now, we will take the signature for open log, put it into flux.h, x turn it. Okay. Now back in lib.c. Yeah, this is kind of a waste of time for the stream. I'll 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 avoid doing this next time. I can do some cleanup over the weekend myself. So init graphics, open log is here. Are you picking it up? Okay, good. After I make a little edit, it, it picks it up. Um, current scene, we need to deal with test scene. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had some initialization for that. Maybe we don't need that anymore. We actually managed to get this working to the point where I don't need this, um, temporary data structure. 
scene event ID, we could move that closer to the initialization. Well, no, we actually need it above the loop. So maybe I'll leave that where it is. Um, and rendering functions, we may need to move those too. So Okay. So it's just current scene, really, that's the problem at the moment. I don't really want to write a function for that. Um, I can have a pointer to a pointer so that the flip function is able to say, here's where I want you to give me the current scene. Kind of seems a little bit weird to do that, but it could be fine, I guess. So... Who else uses current scene, I guess? In scene.c, current scene. So flip current scene. If we had a pointer to the pointer, we could set it here. Otherwise, it's not being used anywhere. So in fact, I think that this could be outside of the, uh, the API. And the staging scene is sort of like an internal concept where you don't have access to it. Well, let's see. This may be a terrible idea, so. We're going to find out real fast. So a pointer to a pointer. So the uh, the pointer itself is a memory location. And when you dereference it, it gives you the actual location where the pointer points to. So if I ha take a reference to the pointer, then it should give me the location to set the value into. So flip current scene at uh, uh, ampersand current scene. And then if I go to uh, flip current scene, I can say um, scene uh, cur current scene pointer. Or is that going to be like a void or something? Void? Because it's a... Yeah, let's see. Current scene... We're gonna dereference that. Ah, no. Okay, let me think about how that gets constructed. So, C pointer to a pointer. I don't know how bad practice this is. Star star. Okay, so maybe a scene star star. Um, so, okay. Dereference it. Ah, I need to use the right name. Current scene pointer. That seems right. So I dereference the scene pointer and it will set the, the pointer to the staging scene. So let's see if that actually works. Anything else in lib.c that needs to be cleaned up? I don't see any markers at the moment, so maybe we're good. Let's try to compile it. Okay, I'm kind of surprised we didn't get any errors there. So let's see what bites us. Um, error resolving make color struct. Oh. So now the guile layer is having a hard time getting access to... This is a pointer to a pointer to a scene. Yeah. Make color struct. I, I may have a bug in what I did. Uh, we'll take a look at that in just a second. <clears throat> so make color struct is not accessible. Oh, that's why. Okay, I know why now. And this is also why we're not getting uh, error messages because I did not go update uh, CMake CMake lists and add those uh, two files in. So we need to add lib slash log dot c and whoops and lib slash uh, scene dot c is there anything else in there that's no, just those um i don't know if we need to mention header files here either but i would guess so How about lib flux dot h we'll see about that and I think I also need to uh, run CMake to update that. So if I were to go into Bootstrap and take a look at how this is done, rerun this file if you change CMake lists. Okay, so we're gonna run Bootstrap again. I'm gonna jump down here, open up a shell, uh, run Bootstrap.sh, CMake. Ah, yeah, I'm not in the um, 
Let's see. Geeks shell pure manifest SCM. Then I'll run uh, bootstrap to SH. Okay, that should be enough. And now if I were to compile again, where is my compiler? Oops, let's go back to libsc compile. All right, that makes more sense. Scene event ID undeclared. So in scene.c, yeah, that's annoying, but I could have a function to set that, I think. Read it from inside out, Gon says. That's a good pointer, actually. A pointer about pointers. So we have that problem where scene event ID is not available. That's fine. Um, each declare undeclared identifier is reported only once. Headers should be found in the same directory, directory as their includers. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Okay, so implicit declaration of function render filled circle. How's that implicit? That's kind of weird. It's just a warning though, so maybe it's fine-ish for now. Okay, so the scene event ID, I think I need a function inside of uh, scene.c. Or, yeah. Seems wrong to, to, to pollute. Um, the scene API with a concept of an event ID. Then the the only alternative is to register a callback with it to say whenever you want to flip the scene, you need to call this function to um, make it happen. Yeah. Definitely not the right time to be doing this part of the work because it's uh, just like a waste of time we could be using for something more interesting. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We'll just go with the cheap approach for now because we kind of need to get this moving. Um, scene event ID is fine to have. Um, we need to set it somewhere. So maybe I can have a function called uh, void set scene event ID. And what type is that supposed to be? It is a you went 32. So I'm just going to have my own local copy of that variable here. Um, scene event ID needs to be in 32. Well, let's see. Let's just call it event ID um, U int 32. And then we're going to set scene event ID equals to event ID. Okay. So now we have a scene event ID and, uh, oh, I need I have a capital. Whoops. Okay, whoa, them keys, you int. Okay, so now this should be fine, this whole file, but then, oh, that's the problem. Cool, I do need to move that function, that's fine. We're gonna take the um, rent, oh, where am I? Render field circle, which makes sense, it should, does not belong here. We're gonna put that into scene.c, and that does not need to be exported in the interface because nobody calls it except for this uh, render C function, scene function. Everything there is all good now. We just need to go back to lib.c and after we um, get that event ID, we need to pass it along so we can say uh, set, ooh. Need to do some namespacing on functions here because we're gonna have a kind of a messy uh, setup. Set scene uh, event ID scene event id okay and we need to put that signature inside of uh scene or flux.h so set scene event id go to flux.h go to where we are talking about that stuff right here x turn all right so that should be good now yeah let's just leave it like that try to compile um, one more problem. 
multiple definitions of scene event ID. Oh, hmm. It's kind of interesting because I would think that different C files should not have conflicts in terms of uh, variables that are defined in each of them. Scene event ID. I'm not actually. All right, so maybe I just need to re uh, rename this. Let's call it. Yeah, it's almost like we need to let this part of the code determine what that event ID is, but I don't want this code calling it to SDL. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I guess it already is calling it SDL, so why? maybe it doesn't matter. Okay, that seems like a better approach. Maybe this code should be responsible for doing like register scene event, it could return a uint 32. And then um, it can call into SDL. So this is not necessary anymore, but we're gonna say register set scene event and say scene event ID. So this doesn't actually solve the problem that we're having at the moment because I still need to figure out a way to um, rename this stuff, but at least we can get this cleared up a bit. Um, flux.h, we're gonna change this to be uint32 register extern declaration versus definition. You must not specify the parameters, only the types. Oh, thank you. Did I, did I have uh, errors about that? I hadn't actually seen it if I, if I did. All right, so let's do this. All right, so uh, register scene event ID, we have that. And then scene.c, did I miss something here? What are you complaining about? Not, control in, reaches end of non void, oh, thank you. Return scene, you see that's helpful sometimes. All right, so now I go back into lib.c, um, register set scene event. Did I call it that? Okay, I definitely, this is a better name. Register set scene event. And I mean, go back to flux.h, I probably should have just Register set scene event. I should have just renamed it using the uh, LSP functionality. Yeah, this is boring. Uh, let me just move on. Got to start doing something else interesting because we're not going to reach our goal for the stream if we don't uh, start moving. Let me compile. Um, yep, still got a problem. Oops, let's go back to lib.c. Fix that little snafu. And this is no longer a function. Um, what do you want? Too few arguments? Oh, yeah, that's my mistake. Remove that. Okay. Now, compile. Still got a problem here. Uh, multiple definition of scene event ID. That's really weird to me, but I'll just find a better name for it. So, in uh, lib.c, we're going to call this the uh, set scene event ID. Scene event ID. We're gonna use a uh, eglot rename uh, set scene event ID. Okay. Now this should be happy in theory. Oh, it, did it actually pick that up across files? Jeez. Scene.c. I need to understand what the rules are there, I think. So set scene event ID. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna get rid of that. Whoa, 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 wrong file, wrong file. I wanna go back to scene.c, set scene event ID. All 
All right, so now compile should be good. Control C R and we're back to rendering. So thank God we got done with that whole issue. And can I get rid of um, some of these prints now? Let me go back to lib.c, uh, SDL, uh, flux, SDL event. I just wanna comment that out for now. And then I'll uh, make this a little bit more explicit. And then inside of lib.c, there was another one that I wanted to get rid of. No, scene.sc, flux log. The actual ID itself. Oh, I think it's in lib, wasn't it? Go back down here. Yeah, get rid of that. I don't want that anymore. Okay, so compile, test it, works. Let's move on. Uh, I'm gonna say, uh, let's just call this item done. It's not exactly what I had planned, but um, that's what we ended up doing. So make sure that we can reavow the scheme code to update the live preview. That does work. We verified that multiple times now, uh, in case you didn't see that before. Um, if I run the rendering code, and then I open up the basic graphics.scm file, uh, let's actually do something different this time. I'm going to add another circle to this list. So I'm going to clone this make circle here. And I'm going to make this one um, yellow. And I'm going to make it bigger. And then I'm going to push it over to about uh, 600x. And we can drop it to 200y. Save that, control C, uh, control B, and there it is. So we have a second circle here, which means that we can do a little bit of interactive um, graphicsing, I guess you could call it. And maybe I wanna move this a little bit. So let's call it uh, 350, uh, control C, B. Okay, so it's like a little sort of a planetary thing we got going on here. Um, Bill asks, can you animate in a loop? Uh, right now we can't because the way that we're expressing this stuff doesn't uh, enable it. Uh, the idea I have in mind is that on the scheme side, you have a more declarative um, model for saying what the graphics should be, including animations. So for a given uh, member of the scene or entity in the scene, you would be able to express what the animation would be or potentially have a kind of like an animation timeline where you have like, like a list of events that happen at certain times. And um, those events may trigger animations on particular elements here. So it could cause these two uh, circles to move or change color or something like that. Um, being declarative about that could require a lot of uh, code to wire things up between the two layers. So I don't know how that's gonna look yet, but that is something we do want to accomplish. So we're gonna be looking into it at some point fairly soon. All right, so now that we have once again validated that we can change the contents, um, we'll move this down. We'll try to deal with that another time, uh, cleaning up the old scene memory, but it does need to get done. Uh, write a function that can convert HTML style hex colors to RGBA. So that's something I can do in the scheme layer. I don't really want to deal with that in the C layer, I think. So, um, yeah, I could spend 20 minutes on that. Let's see. Let's go to graphics, maybe. Oh, no, we're in the wrong tab. Uh, graphics. That SCM. Now. Where did we mention colors here? Okay, make color. Make circle is a function that takes a color, but I could actually pass it directly a uh, string. In fact, since this is a scheme, I could take either one, to be honest. And uh, based on the type, I can uh, deal with it differently. I'm, I'm, I'm noticing now that I've got the stupid uh, backdrop flapping around in the background. Um, all right, so what I want to do next then is to write a function for that inside of graphics.scm. So let's see. String to color. I think that's probably the way we want to call this. I need to put a parenthesis around this part. And I'll call this color string or maybe hex string, maybe hex string. 
And uh, what I need to do is uh, strip off the hash, uh, take three or four pairs of uh, letters, numbers, and then um, convert string to uh, hex, or yeah, convert hex string to integer, I guess you could say, convert hex string to integer. So I wonder if Guile has any functions for dealing with this. I'm gonna get rid of this little uh, pop-up for a moment. Go back to the info system. And um, we can go up. Input and output is not really what we want. So I will go to the index, procedure index. I'll search for hex. Let's see, hmm, they don't have anything for hex. Um, so string to integer, locale string to integer. Okay, number input and output, that sounds good. And the, we have a base, so I could actually convert based on the base, do I have a REPL? Let me actually pull that up in a REPL. So if I do control CR, oh, um, let me actually go and, that's the problem is I, I try to run stuff and it doesn't work. I will, um, what was it called? Locale string, string to number, it was info buffer, right? Info locale string to integer and base is the second one so 16 for a hexadecimal number so i'll go back to graphics sdm scm uh integer um the number or the string is hex string and then the number or the base is 16. so that should be enough actually to do that so i don't even need to Ooh, hold on i need to do it for each pair so I need to, I need to, okay, Let, let's actually pull the REPL because it's going to be a lot easier to figure this out whenever I can, come on, when I can uh, play around a little bit. So we'll just put this a little bit to the side and then in the REPL, I can experiment with that function. So let's say locale string uh, to integer, does this actually work? Uh, we're going to say FF, which should be 255, I think, right? Um, all right, so I need to pull in a module for that, I think. Pull up the info tab. And what? Which module is this in? Let's go up one level. Okay, it's ICE 9 I 18 N. Okay, whoops. Yeah, this thing is gonna drive me nuts. So we need to go to the imports and add ice nine I eighteen ten. Sorry, I eighteen N. Uh, also in the REPL, uh, let's see REPL. Which one is open? That one's dead. REPL. That one's dead. REPL. You're good. So use modules. Ice nine. Uh, yep, here we go. Um, I eighteen n. All right, and then we're gonna try to run that one function again right here. Cool. So, what is that second? It's, there's values being returned here. Maybe it's like a um, remainder or something. But anyway, we got what we expected to get. Um, let's say if I put uh, a a. Yeah, that's that's what I expected to be. Okay. So we can use that for the pairs, but we also need to figure out how to split up um, a string into substrings. So if I were to go back to the info buffer, we can go up, up. Um, what about strings? Go down to the um, procedure index, uh, substring, match substring. Let's see, substring, string selection. I could probably use a regular expression to pull this stuff out too, but I'm not gonna bother with that at the moment. String start, string end. Okay. 
and then string length for the length of the string. So if I were to go um, back to the REPL and say substring, is this actually a goop? Okay, good. Substring of uh, F, F, O, O, F, F. In fact, I could probably even just leave that in. And I want to get um, starting at character one and ending at character three. Okay, that gives us FF. So what we could do then is go into graphics.scm, um, pull up a little let here. We'll get off, we'll get the first um, three sets and then we'll try to pull the alpha set if we can. So R is equal to, I need to check this a little bit too to make sure that it's not gonna be wrong. So hex string. So we're gonna do R G B. Oops. And then we're gonna, um, I think we're just gonna start at three here and say one, two, three, three, four, five, um, five, seven. In fact, we can go ahead and do the conversions here as well. So this whole locale string to integer function. I mean, hold on. So should I just actually, no, I can't do that because I need them to be separated. All right, so we'll do that and then 16. All right, probably should have done that whenever I copied all those before, but here we are. And then um, move that 16, we'll do the same thing here. Move the parenthesis 16. And now I should be able to call make color um, RGB 255. We'll just do that for now. So now if I were to go into basic graphics at SCM, no, actually we need to go and, hmm. Which one are we calling? Graphics at SCM. Yeah. Okay. So basic GFX. We're passing in make color here, but what I actually want to do is pass in uh, F F O O O O here and turn on rainbow mode. Okay. And then uh, make color should be sort of implicit here. So I'm calling the make circle function. So let's go to graphics, make circle. Where is that function at? Right. Oh, it's a struct. Hmm. So the problem is, I don't know how we can actually affect what gets stored there. Actually, currently we can just put whatever we, we want there. And then whenever it gets read in, that's the point at which we should do something about it. So uh, make circle struct. That calls directly into that, but we have to do some kind of uh, massaging before, so I think it comes at this part. Make color struct. So we get color here, circle color member. Hmm. So when I read the color out, I need to convert it at that moment. But honestly, I could probably do this. Define a color to struct. Uh, Colorish, I guess we could call it. Just something is like a color, basically. And um, if a string colorish then we're going to return um what was it called string to color and string to color i mean why not just go ahead and directly make the color struct at that point because we already got all the information so make color struct yeah This should be specific color struct. 
All right, Stringer Color Struct, Colorish. And then otherwise, we're going to use Make Color Struct directly and decompose the um, values to pass it in. I think we really need some other level on this, but we won't worry about that right now. Okay, so Make Color Struct, and uh, we just need to add the ish to all of these right here. So that should work for that. And now we can actually um, take the let out of this. Take a couple of levels off of that as well. And then um, we can call color to struct on that. So now, no matter what we use in the definition for a color, it should work. I need to, to basically reload all this code. All right, so let's check this out. Bad let form in locale string to integer. Oh yeah, I uh, have one too many levels here, I think. So let's take that out. Nope, that's the wrong one. This one. And I need to add a parenthesis or actually move, let's move this. Whoa, that's the wrong level. Hold on, hold on. No, hold on, that's wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's wrong here. So we have that, we have that, we have that. What's, is it because of that? Oh, okay, that's the problem. That makes sense. I must be creating something incorrectly now. Um, Let's see. Kind of a waste of time, but make color struct RGB 255. That should be enough for that. Provided that we actually get you know reasonable information. Let's write out display here. Um, converted color is. I don't know if that S is what I, what I want here. Is it D? Let's see if that's right. RGB. So we'll do this uh, one more time. Did we even get there? Oh, converted color. That's definitely not the right integer that I'm looking for. Oh boy. So it got stuck at that point. It seems a weird place for it to get stuck. Let me go back to basic GF, GFX and try to um, put this back in and then comment out that string and then run it one more time. Okay, so that works fine. That's good. So at least that path is uh, not broken. So it's just the string path. So something about the way that we're returning this value must be uh, broken. The conversion must be broken somehow. Back into graphics, uh, we have the function that derives this behavior, uh, color to struct. Maybe if I can do a begin here and say display uh, convert string. And then give it uh, colorish, And then wrap that so that we can see the output. Just interesting that it gets stuck there, but I think it must be because it's... Um, giving garbage basically to the C layer. Procedure display wrong type argument in position two. Oh, did I do something wrong? I need to use like a format. Yeah, I think format is the one I want. Format, um, was it F or T? Format. Yeah, format T. Okay, I've got the whole thing wrong here. So that's a tilde instead. Gon says, can you recommend a good book on scheme? I do have C-list books. 
Uh, well, uh, the structure interpretation of computer programs is kind of like the canonical um, scheme book, I think. Um, then also, even the Guile manual is pretty good at giving you the basics, so you could probably learn scheme from reading that, but I don't know that I learned scheme... I think it was, was just reading code. I don't know if I actually re read a book to learn scheme. I can't remember. <clears throat> I will be doing a, a crash course on uh, Guile, though, on System Crafters at some point in the fairly near future. So that hopefully should help, especially if you had a little bit of experience already with um, Common Lisp. So we need format here, format uh, hash T. Let's see if we get an actual output from this. The Little Schemer, yeah, those are good books. Thanks, Bill. That's a good suggestion. Haven't looked at those in a while. Okay, converted color is totally whacked out right now. I must have done something wrong here. Uh, locale string to integer, substring hex string one to three. All right, so let me grab more information on this. I'm not I'm not thrilled with having to do it this way, but at this moment, what else do we have? I'm probably pulling the wrong set of things somehow. Ashraz says there's also some write yourself a scheme in XY hours tutorials on writing a scheme interpreter. They teach you scheme from the interpreter's perspective. That's actually a good way to do it too because the scheme language is pretty... Um, simple almost like c in a sense like that so you could definitely learn um scheme by implementing your own interpreter that might be a lot of fun actually we may end up doing that on uh this channel sometime as well okay so control c r oh, okay i saw a window flash by uh oh uh oh uh oh All right. Oh, there we go. Thank God. I thought for a second there that uh, everything locked up completely. All right. So FF converted color F F O O O O. What is the deal? Where are we in the stack? Okay, so it must be upside down. Like it's actually going in the order in which it's executing. I'm used to seeing stacks the other way, um, kind of in reverse order. Converted color, uh, oh, there's strings. That's my mistake. But that shouldn't have caused what I just saw. And we know now that it has FFOOOOO, so it should be fine. So the problem we're seeing then is that the, um, do we ever see what the numbers are supposed to be? Let's try that for a second again. Kill it, kill it early. Uh, printing backtrace, wrong argument. Wrong argument in position one. For which? Converted color. Okay, still. That is so weird. What is going on? So we tested that in the REPL. Hex. Oh, uh, okay. No, that's right. We're getting hex string one to three. We're get you get FF. You convert it to a base 16 integer. Um. So, oh, can I do that? Run, no. Probably not gonna work. Let's go to another location. How about uh, right here, run guile. So let's try that one more time because something is really wrong. Is this the same one? Can't be right, okay. So use modules uh, ice nine I 18 N. Then the code was substring. Let's just grab this whole bit here. Let's just replicate the whole section of code. 
Okay, so go back to the REPL uh, paste. For hex string, I'm going to put in FFOOOOO and then try to execute that. Okay, so we did get something unexpected here. Uh, Gavin says, you could also literally read the spec. That's actually what I did now that I think about it. I was reading the RS, the R6RS spec for Scheme and uh, learning the language from that. So yeah, that actually is a good way to do that. I am very confused. And we're spending time on something that's not really even worth it, to be honest. Okay, so it gives you FF. Locale string to injure. I swear to God, we actually did this and it worked right. Something is wrong. So if I put in um, FF directly, we get 255. So what is substring returning? Is substring returning some other type of data? I didn't think so. FF, oh, 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 one, three. Yeah, what's wrong with it? String? It's returning a string. Yeah. I don't get it. Three, five. Three, five. Yeah, it's what I expect. It can't be pulling the hash off the front because um, we've already gotten rid of it. Yeah, I may have to come back to this one another time because there's no point in um, trying to make this work whenever we've got other things we need to finish before the end of the stream. Okay. So, um... So long as this doesn't crash what we're running, I think we're okay to uh, continue experimenting with other stuff. So I'm going to leave this here for now and then um, go back into basic graphics and uh, put this back to being a normal color. We'll replace that with zero and then uh, we'll just take this color out right now just so we don't have any trouble. So if I run the REPL again, it should just load up. Okay, so we're good there. Um, Let's move on to the next thing. We will go go back to this if we have time. What I want to do, that's the REPL, which, okay, I'll REPL, okay, cool. Let's close that. Um, I want to uh, render the image that we've got to a PNG file. So uh, I then know that SDL has some routines for that. Um, SDL to uh, save image. Loading and saving images with SDL2. So long as I can use it, use it with the renderer, I think I'll be okay. It needs a surface. Okay, that's loading an image, which we will need at some point soon. Um, okay, so SDL to renderer save image. I feel like I had a link saved for this at some point. Save SDL texture to file. Um, let's see. Saves the texture to a BMP file. I don't want that. I want PNG. Oh. Texture, query texture, create texture, set render. Okay, setting render target makes sense. That's kind of a lot of stuff just to get where I want to be, though. Okay, let me check uh, some previous show notes. I think I had something for that. No, not that one. What about the this one? There we go. Is that the one I looked at before? Ah, it's the same post, okay. So let's see, that's the old one. No side effects out of the file, right? So they're creating a render target for the renderer. Um, let's see. <laughs> Qu 
query texture, create RGB surface, render. Okay, so you can use image, save PNG. I think I have the image libraries already pulled up in the manifest. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Let's see, in the manifest file, um, manifest SEM, I'm pulling in SDL2 image. And let's make sure that's the CMake lists are, is pulling that in too. So it's currently not, but I'm pretty sure if I were to add uh, package config SDL2 IMG, probably it will work. And also here, um, SDL2 IMG. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I think we're... We have to do this ourselves. Okay, so IMG. IMG. Hopefully this works. I'm going to go back into VTerm here and run uh, Bootstrap. Okay, so it doesn't like that for some reason. No package SDL2 IMG found. Um, let me consult with... Uh, package config, <clears throat> see if it's called something weird. Come on, config, C flags, uh, SDL2 image. Nope. Um, what about uh, SDL2 image? Let me think about this for a second. What is it called in the manifest? I think it's the same thing, right? Manifest. Oh, image, the whole word. Image. That's it. Okay. That makes sense. Image, image. And then here we're going to pull in uh, image. And then we're going to run bootstrap again. Okay. I think we're okay for that. And now um, we will go back to our lib.c, I think. You need to think about the right place to put this in. So we, what we really wanna do is just like take a snapshot of the preview at any given point, or alternatively have a way to just run the command directly on the command line and just get an image out of it uh, based on an input scheme file. But for now we can just uh, have the, uh, well, how will we even convey that? Yeah, I haven't really thought about this part yet, but we need a way to say what the target image file should be. Thanks, Ashras. Um, if we know what the target image file name should be, then a different flag can be passed on to the program to um, get it to render the image out as a file instead of uh, being in the REPL. But maybe we can just start with a um, more direct function for that. So how about we go to graphics.scm, uh, define uh, render to file. And it's sort of like a, uh, a directive to send to the uh, rendering thread. In fact, I wonder if I could do that. I don't know how strings work when passing through to that layer. I need to check that out really quickly. So we need to go back into the info manual and go up. Um, let's see, data types, no. Foreign, defining new data types in C. No, don't want that foreign function interface. Uh, foreign, whoops, oh, man. Keep hitting the wrong keys. We're going back to foreign function interface and to foreign types. That's the one I want. Foreign types. So let's see. What about a string? Double int short. Um, int pointer. We have pointers to various different things, which is interesting. Void. So string care maybe there is a uh, an example somewhere care no it's 
It's basically a bite array, so maybe it's a pointer to a bite. There must be some documentation for this, though. Four instructs, care, string, bite. Okay. Time of day. It just returns integers. It's not returning strings. Procedure to pointer. Well, I wonder what happens if I just pass it a string. I mean, has it converted to something? Pointers to C data or functions. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's, it's funny that they don't have any examples. Oh, strings conversion from C, str from to C. Thanks, Ashra. So 65514. Um, are these numbered? 65. Okay, it must be that it's in the string section. Awesome, thank you. Conversion to from C. Yada, yada, yada. SEM from locale string. Okay, so that's going one direction. We want to go the other direction. We want to go from scheme to C. C function, C type, C function, C function, a bunch of C functions. Is there not a, not in the FFI section? Yeah. Where, where are the scheme functions for this? Whoa, hold on. What did I do wrong? Uh, scheme string from a C string or when converting a scheme string to a C string, concept of character encoding becomes important. Um, just a sequence of bytes. From C to scheme uh, to C. Converting a scheme string to a C string will often allocate fresh memory. Okay, that's fine. But uh, where is the function I can use to do that? to C. That's kind of weird. Like they have a section for this, but they don't actually tell you what function you use for this. So what about the next? Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, no. String bytes per care. Fine. Unicode code points. Representing strings as bytes. String to byte vector. Okay, maybe that's what I want. The string will be encoded in the character set specified by the encoding string. If the string has characters that cannot be represented in the coding default, this procedure raises an encoding error. So I want ASCII characters, I think. And what is encoding supposed to be? Uh, see ports for more on character encodings. ASCII, no, encoding. Uh, it's not what I expect to see, come on. Data types, uh, strings. Yeah, I need to find better key bindings for navigating around in this. Set port encoding. Okay, so set port encoding. Do we, does it actually tell us that function here? Set port, no. Encoding, encoding. Next, by, oh, okay. So there's, there's like more sections I need to be dealing with here. Okay, so binary IO. Um, 
okay, let's look. Encoding, thank you, jeez. Valid encoding names are those defined by the IANA. So I don't think I want UTF-8, do I? Probably want, uh, yeah, something weird is going on with Cute Browser. I don't actually get any text showing up in, whoa, oh my God. I don't get any text showing up in, um, uh, browser windows anymore. I have no idea what happened with that. I don't think that's the right key binding. That I just, okay, it was. What did I just press? Apparently I just killed that Firefox window, which is great. Oh, I have no idea what I just did. Okay, so let's go back to that same place and try to, to, to uh, search for ASCII again. I think it's probably just ASCII, straight up. Um, ASCII. Okay, just simply ASCII. Yep, US ASCII. Okay. Okay, now where was I? Totally sent me on a roundabout path to get to where I wanted to be. But, no, back to data types, back to strings. Um, there was a function called string to byte vector. Ugh. All right, so maybe I need to start grabbing a little bit of stuff from this. So um, string to uh, byte vector. Render to file a uh, file name file name us ascii and i don't think that string to byte vector is actually um available i think it's in this icon and every time i press a button it just sends me somewhere else ice 9 icon so let's go back Okay, so now string to byte vector should be available. Hey, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, hi, uh, Ar Arugamum, Ar Arumagum, Arumagum. Sorry for that. I try my best to pronounce things correctly. Um, so, we should be able to get a file name from that as a byte vector. But the question is, can I just go from a byte vector directly to um, something that can be passed across to the C layer? So I think if we go back to the information about foreign function interface and uh, foreign types, they were talking about byte vectors in one of these. All right, um, foreign structs, byte vector. Okay, byte vector to pointer. There we go. So byte vector to pointer should give me a pointer. Marshalling from and to C should be easier. After all, Guile has macros. Yeah, well, for this particular thing, I feel like there should be something for it, but uh, apparently there's not. So. so pointer to byte vector, pointer to byte vector. And now this can just be, no, sorry, other way around. Byte vector to pointer. Whoa. Thanks, dear uh, Lispy. Pointer. So, ah, uh, check that the byte vector really ends with a slash O byte, otherwise we'll have fun. Hmm. I would think that it should. I wonder if I can just write out a byte vector directly. So if I call render to file, let's actually try that. I think we could do that. So I'm going to clone this. I'll comment that out. I'm going to take this part out. Or actually, I'm going to uh, display. Nah, format. No, pretty print. Do I have pretty print still? 
pretty print. Okay, so it's still in here. So I can put render to file in the exports, render to file, and now I'm gonna go over to um, basic graphics, render to file. Um, I'm gonna say uh, test.png. And do we have an active REPL currently? We do have one, so let's uh, recycle it. And we should have had something written out here somewhere. Okay, so we do have a byte vector. Um, it doesn't like a zero at the end. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it does not have a null terminator at the end. I think I can just push something on the end of the byte vector. If I just push a zero on the end, maybe. It's a good point that you made there because that could have been a real disaster, I think. So let's close that. Whoa, what did I just do? Close that out. And then go to the info section again. I want to go up to the procedure index, uh, byte vector. Length set. Can I just add something to it? Is there like a push? No. Uh, no, it's not using OpenGL yet, Gavin. It's uh, we're, we're still at the phase of trying to get things uh, sending across to the C layer correctly. I'm trying to basically ask for um, a an image to be rendered, but I have to tell it what the file name is. And now we've hit the issue of having to uh, convert the file name over to a uh, C string. And you fell asleep. <laughs> what time is it there? It must be early. I know I wish it could be later, but I, I can't do a three hour stream without uh, running into work time unless I do it this early. Ref and set. Get byte vector. Uh, put byte vector. That doesn't sound like what I want though. Write the context of BV to port. Okay, so we need to go back. Um, byte vector. Let's go byte vector manipulation, maybe. Uh, byte vectors and integers, up byte vectors. Let's go up. Uh, byte vectors as arrays, okay or uniform vectors. Can we push? Um, ref type. Okay, well that doesn't help. Uniform vectors, uh, at surfy four and byte vectors. Okay. Oh, API. See you, Ashraz. Thanks a lot. Yeah, working till three. Yeah, you don't want to be doing that and trying to wake up early. I've, I'm on about four hours of sleep from last night, actually. Okay, so um, let's go back. I guess these things are just pre... Uh, pre-allocated, so maybe that's why I can't easily just add something. Make byte vector. I, I could make a new byte vector, which sounds like total overkill. Okay, hold on. So the function that I'm using, there's got to be a way to tell it to put a terminator on there. I mean, come on, this is so common. Where am I looking for? Graphics.scm. I need to go look down here. String to byte vector. I need to look at the function um, documentation. Geyser doc. Auto doc show. You're not giving me anything, are you? Okay. Go back to info. Procedure index. Um, string byte vector.
Come on now. Transcoders. String encoding conversion strategy argument to specify other behaviors. Okay, can you tell me what the parameters are? Character and oh, fuck. <laughs> Go back. Man, the the info key bindings are driving me insane. String uh, byte vector. See ports for more on character encodings and conversion strategies. So conversion. They never really tell you what they're t what they're trying to tell you. Go up to the top of the buffer. Wow. How pointless is that? Okay, let's think about this for a second. Um, maybe the way to proceed with this is just to um, hard code the file path for now, just to get something rendering. To try it out, we can figure out the rest of this stuff the next time because this is a little bit complicated and I may need to do a little bit of research on it. Uh, it, it seems a little bit ridiculous to me that they don't null terminate the string when I get converted to a byte vector because it kind of is needed for an ASCII string, but whatever, we'll deal with that. So um, on the uh, lib.c side or potentially even, see render scene, it's gonna be in scene.c. So render scene takes a renderer and the, um, oh, do, do I not even have that? Let's see, where was that? I don't have that anymore, do I? Fantastic. Org files, we're looking for this one and trying to grab this link. All right, so we have this suggestion here for how to uh, render, Let's see, set render target, renderer target. What is target? Where is, the, where is this target variable that they have here? It does not exist. Oh, right there in front of my face. Get render target. I see. Okay, so it's taking the old render target of the renderer, setting a new one to a texture. <clears throat> You're creating a texture first. All right, so I think I need a little bit of a better example here because that one was not so good. Query texture, wow. Width and height, create texture. Set render target. Render copy. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. Save image PNG. Oh, okay. So hold on a second. Um, save BMP. Where is that? Okay. 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 So yeah, this would work. Is that a go-to? All right, let's just copy and paste because this is too much code to try to just like piece through. We should look at it in a code editor and not on this big bright white screen. Um, I'm going to go into uh, scene.c, right? Why is it not showing up anymore? Scene.c, okay. Paste that in really quick. Clean up. Okay, so failed saving image, SDL log. So SDL's got its own logging stuff, obviously, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. 
All right, so save texture. It takes a renderer. So we need a, a wrapper on top of this, basically. So I can have a function called uh, void uh, render to file or render scene to file. How about that? Render scene to file. And then everything else. So we don't have the renderer, do we? We're going to need to. Let's see. Render scene to file. Maybe that needs to actually be in lib. Render loop. Because this is where the renderer lives. The renderer is held by um, the lib.c file right now. <clears throat> so we can do this. Render scene to file. I'm going to have to take the renderer and drop it outside. Which I don't really want to do. But um, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to set this to uh, null first. And then get rid of the definition here. And then um, render scene to file needs to call into that save texture function. So we need a renderer, we need a texture, and a file name. So texture wise, we need to get the texture of the, or Hmm, hold on. Query texture, create texture that is a texture access target. Kind of felt like this was going to be easier. So apparently it's not. So we're querying the texture. Uh, ST contains what? It's an integer, okay? But we're getting the width and the height of the original texture. I don't really think we need that. I mean, we sort of know this, the, what this, the image dimensions are supposed to be already, but whatever. Um, so we're creating another texture. Let's see, render texture. Uh, setting the render target. We're clearing off the render texture. And then we're copying the original texture to the render texture. Um, and we're creating a pixel buffer. Render read pixels. I am so confused. Oh, okay, we're taking the, the I don't know why we need this intermediate um, texture for this whole purpose. It seems way overkill. Then we render the texture into the pixels array. So now we have raw pixel data. Create RGB surface with format from, my God, I mean, like how many surfaces are we creating here? There's gotta be an easier way to do that. That just doesn't make sense. SDL2 renderer, uh, save uh, to PNG. Using renderer for, oh, this is a video. I don't want to watch a video right now. No, 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 no. Create a screenshot in SDL2. That's basically what we're trying to do. See, that looks way simpler. Render get viewport. Create RGB surface. Uh, render read pixels, renderer. So that's like a snapshot of the current renderer right surface where's surface come from create rgb surface we're getting the format of the surface let's see hold on a second okay i mean this should work Let's try this one instead. I think this seems a little bit more sane, in my opinion. Um, all right, so we're gonna go here. So if we wanna, if they, 
if, if a uh, picture is requested, I suppose, or if a save of it is requested, void um, render to file. We're gonna go back and take a uh, const care file name. Let's just delete this code out of here because it's just too insane. Maybe there's a reason for it, but for now, let's just assume that we don't need it. So uh, const care, in fact, here's what I'll do. Let's leave that off for now. We're just gonna call into the, the SDL renderer for that. And uh, we're gonna say const care star file name equals uh, test.png or let's say output.png. How about that output.png? Uh, we're hard coding it because we had trouble getting uh, a string from scheme to C. We'll work on that another time. Uh, for right now, we're just going to do uh, hard coding to output.png. That's fine. I'm not. I'm okay with that for now. So viewport. Um, we're getting the viewport size of the current render, which is useful information because we actually have an issue with that right now. Creating an RGB surface. I'm kind of curious what. Um, these parameters are for because there's a lot of parameters here. I know I'm just doing variable cleanup at the same time. Create RGB surface, um, allocate and free an RGB surface. Uh, L doc doc buffer. Oh, capital K. Cool. I like that. That's great. Okay, so. Uh, flags is zero, uh, obsolete set the zero width and height, uh, depth and bits of the surface to create, uh, and then the mask of the surface in the RGBA channels. Okay. So I'm not worried about that at the moment, but we may need to deal with alpha mask at some point. So to do alpha mask. Okay. So check if the surface is created properly. We'll clean that up a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll not deal with the log statements just yet. <clears throat> I think I set that to avoid. All right, so SDL render read pixels, renderer null. Um, we're gonna get rid of all the underscores here. All right, and then free surface, okay. And now we're going to call it image save PNG to save it to a PNG file after the fact. Uh, we're going to use the file underscore name here. And we'll uh, fix the log statements in a moment. We'll change this to non return type. All right, we're freeing that memory too. And we don't need the return down here. So uh, we don't have image save PNG yet. I think I need to go uh, up to the top here and include SDL2 image.h. Uh, doesn't like it. I wonder why. Let me see if I can jump into this file location. So SDL to include SD is it SDL image? Uh, no, no, it's not gonna be that. Okay, so I got to jump out. This is gonna be fun. We're gonna go into the GNU store completely. SDL to image. Um, right there is the one I want, I think include SDL to SDL underscore image. Okay, so let's give that a shot. Or even SDL to slash. Sometimes it needs that too. It sure isn't liking it, is it? Oh, do I need to restart the language server? L got, got, eglot, eglot. Eglot, restart, reconnect, quit, who knows, uh, shut down, shut down. 
But what else do I need to say? Yeah. You, oh, it's shut down. Okay, you know, I don't really need to know for sure. Ugh, I have to ask it. Is there not a command for this? Eglot. Shut down. Uh, yeah, well, we'll shut that one down. And then I'll start it up again. Eglot. Okay, so. Let's get rid of that for a second. What about that? You're not happy still? Try to compile it. Um, okay, so it doesn't like STL image, STL2 slash STL image. Okay, I think that was right. Okay, so now, if I look back down here, in theory, that function is accessible even though it's telling me it's not. So, oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, okay, that's the right place. Um, I can call render to file. And yeah, this is going to be interesting. So render scene to file. I need access to the renderer. So maybe request render scene to file. We could do that. And then um, we can check this. Yeah, this is really dirty. We're just going to get this working. Okay. That's all I'm really worried about doing is just getting this working. So um, you int eight. Uh, render or so save requested equals zero. This is terrible, terrible. Don't do this. So save uh, request equals one. And I'm doing this so I can actually access this function from scheme. So what I'll do is go into graphics.scm. Um, I'll call this, well, I guess, yeah, okay. In here, we have a bunch of functions. Is there one that doesn't take anything? Okay, cool. That's one like this. Request uh, render to file. Request render to file. And this one, um, I'm going to call request render to file. All right, so now inside of, uh, which one is it? Basic, basic, no, it's not open, is it? Basic graphics at SCM, render to file is being called. So that means in graphics here, this gets invoked and then request render to file gets invoked, which means that in lib.c, this gets invoked. So now what I need to do is go into the render loop. Um, after the render has been presented, I'm guessing, um, save the scene if requested. So honestly, this doesn't even need to be in scene because we're not rendering specially. We're actually just taking the output of everything that's been rendered so far and then uh, saving it. So um, in fact, let me just go into scene.c, take this render to file. and put it back here. Okay. And in the loop, I can do a check. Uh, if save requested, IntelliSense, no, re save requested equals one. Uh, save requested equals zero. Uh, render to file, I must've done something wrong in here somewhere. Did I miss uh, copying something somewhere? Why don't you like void? Too few arguments. Oh. Not where I would expect to see that. Render to file. And we need to pass in the renderer. Okay. 
Save requested. Save, okay, so let's change this to requested. This is terrible, like I said, terrible. Um, I think everything's good here. We're gonna go into scene.c. We're gonna take SDL image out. We're gonna put it up in this file instead. And now we're going to compile it. All right, so that is okay. And now if I were to go and run, all right, so error resolving request render to file undefined symbol request render. Okay, that's why. So it's called request render to file on the scheme side. Let's just you know, make it consistent. Okay, so um, it didn't crash, which means it must have done something. Output.png. Let's uh, close that out really fast. Let's see if this actually has anything in it. 9.3K. Hey, look at that. We actually do have a PNG file. So um, it's clipped off, which is interesting. It's not actually showing the right uh, information. I wonder why. Something weird is going on with the uh, SDL window here, as you can see, because it's supposed to be a... 1280 by 720 size and the dimensions are totally whacked out. I don't know exactly what's going on here. So I just rendered it again by running it. Oh, it's different size this time. Oh, wow. What's happening? Huh? Does it need time to render it out completely? What's happening? Let's let's check this out. 13K. Okay. What is happening? How do I zoom out of here? I just changed the orientation. Wow, it's black. It worked the first time, then all of a sudden it stopped working. Wow. Okay. Well, it, we're, we're making some progress here. Obviously it just is not, uh, the progress I would hope to see. You know what? Um, let's, before we flip the back buffer, maybe I should do it at that point. I don't know if, if, uh, the back buffer should be flipped first. I don't know which one it's actually going to take. So let's do that first. All right, so we got that. And then let me um, go back to this 16K this time. Oh, okay. So is that the whole image or just a fraction of it? Seems to be the whole thing. Okay, so that's good. Um, this is Feh. Okay, so Feh uh, zoom key binding. Zoom. Oh, it's the arrow keys. Ah, great. Okay, good. I think we did it. So I don't know why the surface is the size that it is. It makes no sense to me why the uh, <laughs> the window is the size that it is. It's taking the whole thing, which makes sense because you're taking the renderer. So whatever surface it has available to it, you're, you're getting it. But something very strange is going on with how the window um gets fully initialized. Let me see if, uh, okay, so it's, it says 12K this time. Something is very inconsistent. I don't know if it's the timing. Whoa, now it's giving me the right dimensions? No. All right, we're gonna try it one more time. And we're gonna see if it gives us another. I'm really confused. It's behaving very inconsistently. Those are not anti-aliased as they uh, say it is supposed to be. Okay, so um, I'm gonna call that working because it actually is rendering. Uh, this is old, so let's go back to the one for today. That's the one for today. We did render the image to a PNG file. We did not get to um, the other stuff we wanted to do, which is to load and render an image file. But I think actually that one's going to be quite simple, but I'm not really prepared for it right now because I need to find an image and I was going to like, you know, try to grab one. 
<clears throat> try to try to render basic text on the image. I'm not going to bother with that right now either. Um, clean up old scene memory. We're going to have to do that at some point. So let's just go ahead and copy these over to uh, next steps and finish writing function that can convert HTML style hex colors to RGBA. Uh, load and render an image file. <clears throat> uh, first and foremost, we need to figure out why the window isn't the correct size because that's having an impact on the image that's being rendered as well. So uh, yeah, I think we're actually making okay progress. I know it seems really, really slow. It feels really slow, but we're, we're figuring out the uh, boundaries between scheme and C while we go here. Um, I wish Guy was making it a little bit easier. The other thing we need to do is um, figure out why, oh, how to um, convert scheme string to null terminated byte vector because we need to have a string for the file name that's being passed across. And this is gonna come up a lot. We're gonna to have to, to convert uh, C strings to, um, sorry, scheme strings to C to pass information across. So we're gonna to have to deal with this pretty often. I'm gonna to have to have some kind of helper function to make this possible. And um, pretty much for any kind of information we're passing across, we're basically gonna get gonna end up building a library of functions that help us to communicate between the two layers. And once we get all that together, then everything should go smoother. But at least for now, um, it's taken a little bit more effort than necessary to just get these things going. Okay, um, was there any notes that I wanted to leave for today? Yeah, I, I lost half the tabs that I was looking at, so. Let's see, oh, let's take this one because this is the place where I got that code from. which actually did work, uh, creating a screenshot of an SDL2 renderer. Okay, cool. So um, that's going to be it for today. It's time for me to go find some food because I'm starving. Uh, but thank you all for being here today. I really appreciate the uh, contributions and participation. Um, next time, I think we'll have a little bit more interesting output and we'll actually be able to um, uh, create a little bit more interesting of an image that could be useful to me at some point in the near future. So that's pretty exciting. But yeah, like I said, we need to build up this communication between scheme and C and it takes some time to sort of figure all this stuff out. But once we have it really well baked in, then we're going to be able to make a lot of progress on a lot of areas, I think. So I'm really looking forward to that. All right. So uh, thank you, Bill. So uh, yeah, we'll see you on uh, Tuesday, 2 p.m. UTC. Um, and those of you who watch System Crafters, uh, we will have a stream tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure what the topic is yet, but I will schedule that uh, probably in the morning my time and you'll see that uh, before the stream time tomorrow. So anyway, thanks a lot for uh, watching today and uh, keep it creative. We'll see you next time. Thanks.